Greetings, everybody. I am April Raquel. I am a 47-year-old singer and performer uh, and a fit model. Fit model, not so much being fitness, but more so being a technical model who gives clothing companies feedback on the functionality and wearability of their clothing. Basically, a human mannequin. I also am on the current season of Ready to Love Miami airing right now on the OWN Network. I found out that I had a, an health issue once I started to feel just discomfort um, in my gut, in my belly. I had a little pooch that I couldn't quite get rid of and couldn't explain. And just to give that some context to y'all, I've been an athlete since I was maybe 13, 14 years old. So I know my body pretty well. And at the time, I was not savvy to understand exactly what the best foods may have been to eat. But I do remember how my body started to feel as these fibroids were, were growing. And I didn't realize that the fibroids were the issue. But this would have been back in 2011, 2012. And I was just starting to have different things happen, mainly the periods that I couldn't control and that just seemed to keep coming every couple of weeks. That was very unusual. And being an athletic person, being an active person, being a person on stage, it was starting to create issues because I didn't know what to expect. And I was also having to, to work through the feeling of, of like, what is happening? Like, I just don't feel well in my stomach. What is going on? What triggered me going to get checked out was it was a moment of intimacy that I was having with the person I was dating at the time and something just wasn't feeling right. He could feel something even. And I'm like, okay, something is definitely wrong and I need to figure this out. And between that and the unexpected periods, which sometimes would happen during moments of intimacy, how embarrassing is that? It was just at that point, I'm like, this isn't something that is going to take care of itself. It's not something I even understand. So I need to go and get this figured out. In addition to that, I, I'm a runner. That is my, my main sport of choice. I ran track high school and college. And continuing my athletic you know, journey and staying fit, I started noticing a really sharp pain in my hip, my right hip. And I thought maybe it was maybe related to because my grandmother had to have my paternal grandmother had hip replacement. And I'm like, well, maybe this is something in our bones, this is something genetically that I needed to like check out to figure out. Am I also maybe predisposition to have some type of issues with my bones? Got an uh, MRI, got an X-ray, actually. Nothing wrong with my bones. Nothing there. The, the doctor said, um, I, the best thing I can do now is to tell you to get an MRI because I can't quite see an issue with your bones. There's nothing telling me here, nothing from your x-rays that's telling me anything. I go get the MRI, bring him back the result. And he's like, ah, I see what the issue is. There is something, a growth that is basically pinching against a nerve. And once you get whatever that is taken care of, the pain in your hip will go away. And I'm like, holy crap. And at that point, I know now it's the fibroids. I get the fibroids removed in 2012. And the doctor tells me that what was actually happening was that the fibroid had grown to the size of a four month fetus and had shifted my uterus over to the right side. So my uterus is what was pinching against the nerve that was causing the pain in my hip. It was so bad, guys, that at some point, some points it hurt to walk. I would limp. I would do a show or a performance where I'm trying to move around on the stage and entertain the people. And I am internalizing all this pain. And it was because the fibroids and I had several, but that one in particular literally took the place of where my uterus should have been. And that was the pooch that I was seeing. So it got pretty severe for me. And I'm not I've never been an overweight person. I've always been around about the same size, five foot seven, about 143 pounds is usually is my norm. I've carried that weight probably since college. Um, so it's not even a thing where you have this big, huge growth or you can see it from outside. But the havoc that was going on inside was just it was kind of uprooting the 
flow of my life. So I, I, I took to that immediately and I had to do something about it. When I got diagnosed with fibroids at this point, again, it would have been early 2012. And um, I just I went to I was going to my mom's gynecologist because, you know, I kind of keep that in the family. And I trusted who she went to. And I knew if this lady knew my mom's body that she would obviously have some insight to my own. So I went to her. Um, and by the way, my mother, of course, did have fibroids and had a hysterectomy in her, I think, late 30s. And this particular doctor performed it. And so um, I went to her to see, well, where am I and what's going on and what do you see and what do I have? And she, of course, did acknowledge, and confirmed that I had about four fibroids that she could see. She pretty much laid out similar options that she laid out to my mom, which is, you know, of course, you can have them removed. You can have a hysterectomy, all of these things. So early 2012 is when I was diagnosed and found out that I had at least four fibroids. I have been so favored. My quality of life was affected in that as a professional performer, I've been favored to maintain a book and busy calendar and schedule. Thank God. Um, and I'm, I've been grateful for the work that I've been blessed to have. And so it keeps coming because that's how gratitude works. At this time, it was really becoming difficult for me to do my job. I am active on stage. I move around. I dance. You know, I use my body and to be in the kind of pain that like I masked the pain. I just felt like what is happening? Is my body breaking down? Is this wear and tear from being like too rough or tough on my body, being an athlete all these years? You know, is being in heels just starting to affect me? Am I on some kind of decline? And mind you, I am in at this time, I am in my mid 30s having these thoughts like what is going on with my body and why am I hurting so much? And I've never had a problem running. I've never had a problem dancing. I've never had a problem after after a performance. The next day, I would be in so much pain, y'all, um, from just the, the, the pinched nerve situation. And at times, my fibroids themselves, like my stomach would give me issues. My gut would give me issues, but nothing pinched worse than the, the, the nerve. So now my athleticism is in jeopardy because I really shouldn't be out running on it. Some days I would run through it. Not a good thing to do if you're in pain. There's You need to take care of whatever issues you're having and not pretend they're not there, which is kind of what I was doing. My performances were now also being affected. Like, do I have to move around the way? No, I can totally just stand there and just engage the people in energy and not move, but that's not me. And that wasn't what I feel I was booked for. People wanted the energy. They wanted the engagement. And so now I feel I can't really fully do my job again. And then on the personal front of things, as I mentioned, the frequent unexpected periods, how can you prepare for that? In terms of intimacy, I would feel the need to give a disclaimer. Um, and thankfully, you know, my guy was understanding of it. And we were um, connected enough at that time that I didn't have to feel too embarrassed about it. But still, but still, who wants to have this happen? You know, you're in the middle of, you know, your intimate moment and then a period comes. Everything about my life now at this point was affected and I was not happy. And I at this point was desperate to figure out what the solution would be. It was not a good time. It really wasn't. 2012 was a tough year for me. I was affected emotionally with my fibroids and that like my self-confidence was a little like I just I didn't feel like the highest vibration of myself. I didn't feel um, as empowered. I felt vulnerable. I felt like I was not in control of my body. I felt diseased because of the intimacy part of it, I felt like that was something that I needed to like now tell. And it just, it did not, I didn't feel good about myself during that time. I didn't feel um, like this was something that I could handle and still like keep my crown adjusted. I felt just a little, I felt like, like, like it was a smaller vibration, a smaller version of myself during that time. And and I came to understand things about womanhood as well at that age is that, you know, without our lady parts functioning, without being able 
to just have a normal menstrual cycle or to be able to give birth or I guess also in the way how we are about our hair, there are things about a woman that if they're not intact, you just, you don't feel whole. And I was starting to feel a little bit of that coming of age. I felt it was a bit early for me to be going through these things, but truthfully it wasn't because my mom was about that age when she started having her more severe issues and it was just upon me so quickly. And I needed to like really make that transition that, you know, this is what life is for us. And I just thought this was the norm. And since every other woman, practically every other woman in my family dealt with fibroids in some some way, shape or, or fashion, I just figured, well, it's, it's now my time and that I'm just going to do what everyone else did. But that was not the case. And there was a solution that was so much better. And I wish that my grandmother was around to, when I came in upon the detox now. I wish this, I was affiliated, knew about the program from my mother so that maybe she could have saved her parts. But prayerfully, I'll be the beginning of a, of a new chapter and just new enlightenment as it pertains to our options and our womb health and our overall feminine health. So before the detox now, I had only explored um, one other option, which was an abdominal myomectomy. I um, was asked at the time, literally days before the surgery, uh, the doctor asked if I might want children. Um, I guess this was her way of seeing if a, a hysterectomy was something that I was even wanting to consider at the time. And I'm like, well, I don't think I want kids, but I know for sure that I don't want parts of me removed that might affect me being able to have them. So let's not do that. So she's like, you know what, it's not a problem, but I will let you know before we remove them, um, there are a few that are along your fallopian tubes. And I needed to ask that because if you want me to get rid of all of them, there very well could be damage from the laser to your fallopian tubes, which would affect you being able to conceive. So if you think you want to conceive, I'm going to leave those alone, but just know at some point later, they could grow and they could become a problem. OK, well, I think I'd rather take that chance than to make such an extreme decision like having my fallopian tubes damaged. So um, I, I went with that because I felt it would at least alleviate me from all of the issues I was having then. Um, and then perhaps prayerfully, these things wouldn't grow and they wouldn't become an issue later, um, which they later did. But um, that was the only option that I pursued prior to even knowing that there was another way uh, 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 free of surgery and free of the invasiveness of having to be cut and to heal and to take time off. Like, I, just, I wish I knew about the detox now the first time, but that was my first attempt to get rid of these fibroids was through an abdominal myomectomy. The my, abdominal myomectomy was effective. The doctor was absolutely right about once this growth is taken care of, your pinched nerve will be gone. That was done. I didn't have that issue anymore. The pooch that I could see protruding from my belly was gone. The periods were now regular. And I'm like, fantastic. Of course, it took six to eight weeks to recover because it pretty much is the same as a C-section. That recovery was horrendous. I found out during the my recovery in the hospital that I was anemic. So I thought that I'd only be in there for two or three days. And I ended up being in there for five because they I had to get a blood transfusion. It was just it was not as simple um, of a procedure as I had hoped it would be. So just the way my body adjusted and me learning and finding out what my deficiencies were and what I had to go through to get it was just um, not something I wanted to experience ever again, but it was effective. And 2012 to 2019, so fast forward about seven years and I'm doing pretty good. I'm not understanding still the effects of food. So nothing about my choices had changed at that point, just that I was now freed of this thing and I could kind of go forth and live my life. But in 2019, I started noticing certain things all over again. The periods were becoming frequent again, that discomfort in my gut was happening. And I'm like, I got a feeling these fibroids are acting up again on me. 
Lord, what am I going to do? So I had a girlfriend, her name is Monique and Monique is, she is my sunshine. She's always downloading into me spiritual gems and holistic gems and organic natural, like this is what her whole life is based on. And she come across the detox now and said, you know, you should actually, you know, check these folks out. She enlightened me that there is a black team that is literally championing the black female womb, the black female reproductive, the health of the black female reproductive system. Is this this actually exists? And is there a way if these things can be eradicated without me going through that process again? I'm signing up. I need to know everything I need to know about what this means, what it takes, what do I have to do? And I did about a year's worth of research because it was a huge lifestyle change and there was so much information to have to like grasp. I took to YouTube. I was watching all the Breakfast Club um, interviews. I was on the website. I'm listening to women's tutorials. I'm watching Coach Jesse have one-on-ones and give her um, consultations, the ones that she made available, it just became more and more clear to me that I'm like, okay, this is how we know the world is so much bigger than what we think. Our reality is just a speck given what the world has for us. There are so many other options and so many other ways of existence and of living. We just have to be open to them. And I made my decision. I decided during COVID that I'm going for it. And I understood that this would be a lifetime commitment because I had already experienced fibroids being removed and then coming back again. And I'm I'm factoring in my age. I know at some point menopause will set in soon and perhaps I won't have these issues. But what I didn't love was the idea that there are tumors going inside my body. And I'm just like, okay with that. Like I really wanted to figure out how do I have as beautiful and as clean and as healthy of an inside as I do outside being athletic and being fit and working out and looking good is one thing, but what does that mean if you're diseased and you're not well on the inside? Um, So I knew I was going to, whatever it was, it needed to be something that did not require me to have surgery. And it needed to be something that I could depend on And that would carry me over the duration. And so if the one common denominator is the food I eat, that was a no brainer and a very easy decision to make. So I was so happy. Monique turned me on to the detox now and I have not looked back since two years later. Working with Coach Jesse and Dr. Amon with the detox now changed my life. It changed everything about my life. I knew that of all the different programs offered that the water fast, the 14 day fast, y'all, that's, that's the zinger. That's the one that's going to test your metal. The one where you don't eat a morsel for 14 days. I knew that that was going to be the most aggressive. And really that's what I was looking for. Like I didn't feel the need to drag the process out and do it in small doses. I want to get to the solution. That probably is the athlete in me that um, is not so much afraid of of how overwhelming the challenge of that was, because it I promise y'all is it's not as bad as it seems. It's so much more mental than it is anything else. Um, but I got my my headspace geared up in the preparedness to like walk into that, knowing that this specific water fast, the 14 day fast, was going to not only address the fibroids, but anything else going on in my body that I'm not aware of or anything else that I'm deficient in, anything else that is off or imbalanced, I knew that it would be a head to toe detox and a reset for my entire body, not just about the fibroids. So I went for it. Like I said, it took a lot of research. I definitely had to um, prepare myself for the process of breaking back into eating, breaking the fast, the assimilation part of it, learning how to shop for these foods, knowing where to go to get things. There are recipes. And so let me just also mention, I'm not a cook. I'm not a cook. I've never been, you know, domesticated in that way where I can just go in in the kitchen and whip up a Sunday meal for like my family. That's never been me ever. I was too busy out in the streets or at volleyball practice, cheerleading practice, track practice, you know, whatever, doing things. So I wasn't, I didn't come up with like the know-how. 
You don't need that to do this program. You don't. If you can simply follow step-by-step recipes and if you can simply do as instructed, everything is laid out so easy. And that helped me. In addition to the diet, the only other thing you do have to incorporate is just, it's the herbs, which is in bottle liquid form. You just take them under the tongue through a dropper. You do those three times a day. You hydrate, 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 because that's what the water fast is. You're literally starving out all the toxins, you're starving out all of the things that the fibroids munch and eat off of. You're giving it nothing at this point and you're killing it with kindness, if you will. So you're drowning these things with water, coconut water, structured water. You're taking these herbs that are literally cleansing all of your organs, cleansing your blood. My mind was just blown at the process of this. And I walk by faith because at the end of the day, this is alternative medicine. This isn't something that the average doctor is going to tell you to do. But I felt much more confident with Dr. Amun's ability to bring all of this full circle. There was a sense of, I don't know, it was just a a confidence that I knew that this was the way for me to to tackle on my issues. And it changed the way I thought about food. Now I am, I've become a label snob. So I'm looking at the ingredients of stuff so I can understand. I'm not saying that I always make the best choices even now, but at least I'm aware and I know what things to stay away from because certain things now bring about certain, um, I guess, results. Like you just you just feel a way when you eat certain foods. And now that I'm understanding the importance of knowing what to put in our bodies and what's hurtful, what's harmful, what's going to make me bloated, what's going to have me cramping, what's going to create, you know, pH imbalance. Now I know. Um, So in this way, I feel like my relationship with Coach Jesse and Dr. Amun and what I've learned and how this has changed my life has literally, I don't, I feel like Benjamin Buttons. I'm not going to lie to you. I just had my 47th birthday a month ago and I don't see any signs of of any old lady (laughs) aging setting upon me because I feel like I'm going to be able to run, to exercise, to wear my heels, to keep it fly, to keep the skin tight. I think everything at this point now, as I look to the second chapter of life, God willing, I get another 50 years. This is now how I want to age and I want to stay looking good and feeling good. And I know for sure now, without doubt, that food is absolutely the medicine or the killer, depending on your choices. So once I was ready to get started, uh, I reached out and I scheduled the consultation with uh, Coach Jesse because I really wanted to talk with her in private about everything that I've been experiencing. And I really wanted just her one-on-one undivided attention with my specific need. And um, after laying it all on the table and being as transparent as I could be, because that is key, y'all. Like we have to be honest about what we are dealing with in order to get the help that we need. Like we can't feel self-conscious or insecure or uncomfortable about sharing certain things. How else are you going to get the help and overcome them? So I told her everything I was going through and dealing with. She recommended that I do the balance program. Um, But of course, me being the overachiever and... uh, the athletic minded person that I am. I'm like, but what about this water fast? Won't I get my result faster if I do that? Can I just eradicate everything in two weeks and be reset? Is that all I need? She's like, whoa, 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 cool, cool, cool heels. It's it's not quite that simple. It's going to depend on many factors. However, if you choose to do the water fast, absolutely, it will be the best reset because now as I go into my fibroid elimination program. I've already done tremendous work and made tremendous progress and eradicated so much that was happening in my body as a result of just going going hard and doing the two weeks of um, the 14 days of the water fast. So it was a choice um, for me to speed things up again. I wanted to get to the result. I needed to get back to feeling good, y'all. Um, And I just think that for a program like this, if you are seeking the ultimate result, your ultimate goal is to shed weight, to eliminate the fibroids, to cleanse your blood, to get your energy up, to get your organs functioning again, to eliminate 
the waste that you've probably been carrying around for years and years. I just feel like the best way to do it is to conquer yourself down, get your mind right, do the 14 days, the way the hydrating, like I literally saw the changes in my skin. And of course I did lose some weight. That wasn't my goal. Personally, I didn't want to lose weight, but you're going to lose excess. I mean, you're fasting for 14 days, but I journaled my whole entire progress, um, my process rather. I journaled the process and I could see my skin lightening. I could see my belly fat diminish. Um, I, I just saw my body transforming um, as a result. So for me, my advice to anybody that's considering doing this would be start with the water fast. I know it's hard. I know it's a sacrifice, but you're showing up for you is really what that is. It's you being the biggest lover of yourself by saying, I am going to cut alcohol. I'm going to cut bread. I'm going to cut meat. I'm going to cut sugar. All of these things that we love and crave, fried foods, you got to give yourself a break from that stuff to understand what it's actually really doing to the body. And I couldn't be more grateful that I took that break because it literally, I've not craved meat ever since. Once I started understanding what the effect it actually does have on the body and especially the fibroids, it was very easy for me to just like, I'm committed to feeling good now. I'm more addicted to that than I am to any specific food. So yeah, the balance program by way of the water fast, um, that, that was my cocktail of programs to get me into a good place. I was able to choose the water fast for me because I knew that I could handle it and I knew that I didn't have any other major health issues. Although I, I would highly recommend going that route, I also recommend sit with your doctor, have some type of consultation, talk to them about what you're considering. Make sure to have any other health conditions that you might be dealing with. Put all of that on the table to make sure you choose the right program for you and then have your consultation with Coach Jesse um, because she's brilliant and she's going to be able to tell you of all of the programs that are offered and of the herbs that are offered, she'll understand how to counter your maybe current existing health issue and what your doctor might be telling you. So that is key because I would never, ever want to encourage someone to do something that might go against where they are in their current like prescriptions or medications you're taking, any of that. So just a quick disclaimer. But once I finished my 14 day fast, so the very first period I got after that, it was, I don't know, it's, it was interesting. It was vibrant. It was very bright and short. My periods had been anywhere from five days, maybe sometimes up till 10. They go off for like a few days. And then like the following week, I have another period already. So it literally would be like every two to two and a half weeks that I'm getting a period. The regularity of it came back. So now I'm able to actually, I know what day of the month or around what day of the month my period is coming. It was not lasting me all week. One of the best things in terms of my overall gut health that I experienced was that I was not, not bloating when I ate anymore. And at this point, I wasn't exactly sure what even created. I had a lot of just discomfort in my gut prior to doing this, this program, not knowing what exactly. So think about it. In the course of a day, we probably get up and we might have breakfast. It might be a breakfast burrito or breakfast sandwich, and maybe we have waffles or eggs or whatever it is. Then at lunch, you're probably having some type of sandwich yet again, meat or whatever. For dinner, you're probably having meat and carbs and you eat all of these things in the course of a day, but you don't know what might be making you feel lousy. Let me tell y'all, after giving up everything and doing this really extreme program where I'm not, not eating anything, Coach Jesse and Dr. Amun did advise, now, once you get past your assimilation plan, which is about four days after doing the fast, you you know, certain things you got to kind of start working back into your diet. You can't just jump in there eating heavy. You got to, you know, eat raw, eat salads, eat fruit. You can make homemade soups with specific ingredients. That's for the first maybe four days or so. But then after that, 
you're able to now eat a bit heartier based off of their meal plans. Dr. Ramon did warn me and said that as you start reintroducing things back into your diet, now you'll have an idea of what works for you and what doesn't. Your body's going to tell you right away. He was not kidding at all. One of my biggest vices, and it still is, y'all, I'm not perfect, is coffee. I still struggle. I love lattes. I just do. I, I love flavored gourmet coffee drinks, right? With the espresso shots in there. I tiptoe back into it to see, can I have this without it, it bothering me? And it, it did. It kind of, it didn't sit great in my stomach. And I was just so hurt by that because I'm like, this is one of the things I'm like, this is going to be hard for me to give up. The next thing that I had that I did not even understand gluten. I didn't know what gluten did. I was not aware of exactly, I know it was a thing now, gluten-free this, and if you're gluten tolerant, that. And I'm like, well, I don't think I'm bothered by gluten, so it was never an issue. Once I cut gluten, and I did that 14-day program, and then I tried to eat a, it was a vegan, and not all things vegan is healthy. Let's be clear about that too. Not all things vegan are good. So there's this sandwich shop out here in Los Angeles that has like the best plant-based burgers. And they had a sandwich, y'all, that literally was identical to the Popeye's chicken sandwich, that crispy, flaky, delicious looking thing that had people going crazy and fighting and, and drive through lines over. They had a vegan version. I'm like, oh man, this is fun. I'm about to try this. This is now I get to like get out here and explore the world of like veganism and I can try all these great alternatives and just see what's out there. I ate that sandwich and I asked my best friend who was with me at the time, who was very, very much a culinary artist. I'm like, how is this thing so meaty? It's so good. This is not, I, I, I feel like this is chicken. She's like, it's not chicken, it's gluten. I'm like, well, what do you mean it's gluten? Again, my understanding of gluten is I'm, I'm not quite, savvy with it yet I'm thinking gluten is bread she's like no it, it is in bread but it's flour and it can be manipulated to be made into any kind of meat that's what they call wheat meat I was like oh okay well I guess I'll find out how this is going to affect me y'all within 20 minutes of me eating that sandwich and I devoured it because it was good I'm not gonna lie to you I got a headache I had to fly home from California to Florida that night so I was on a flight and I just remembered the pressure of being in flight and how I was feeling was odd. It was just off. Now, mind you, I'm coming off of being squeaky clean. Weird enough. So let's fast forward. This is a year in. Okay. This wasn't immediate. I didn't jump off like the wagon and start eating crazy right after I got off the thing. I was good for a solid year. So this is the following summer, 2021, that I decide I think I can, I'm good. I can have a gluten sandwich. What's going to happen? I had the headache. The next day when I got home, I was so lethargic, which is not normal either. I typically am not zonked after flying. Um, I typically sleep on the red eyes getting home. That whole day, I just slept. A few days later, I got a period. A day or so after that, I had the most severe abdominal cramp in my upper, like right under my rib. Um, I was bloated all that week. And I still didn't connect it until... Maybe about a week into it, I'm like, okay, whatever I've done, I've messed up. I gotta take the own, I gotta take the onus on this. I clearly have thrown myself off. What did I do? I backtracked my steps and I went back to that sandwich. At which point I Googled it now, because now I need to know. Let me educate myself on what gluten does to the body. And every single thing that I was experiencing, it was right there in writing. The abdominal cramps, the the bloating, um, the headache, the fatigue, the period part of it, I think was just now my fibroids flaring up because at this point I'm also drinking coffee. So now my body is telling me, this is what you don't do unless you want me to react. I'm gonna turn up on you if you do this. And I was just like, oh my God, y'all. I called coach Jesse frantically worked up because I'm thinking I've totally damaged and undone all that hard work. And I'm like, coach, this is what I'm dealing with. And I ate this sandwich. And I think she's like, well, is there anything else? What else have you been consuming? I'm like, well, I have had coffee. I have. She's like, coffee and gluten are most definitely the two biggest enemies of fibroids. 
So your fibroids are kind of going crazy right now. Don't fret. Give yourself about a week. Do about five days or so. Have a couple days. Eat your fruit. Cleanse yourself. Prep. And then do five days of water. Go back to that. You'll reset. You'll be fine. She was right. I didn't have to do the whole 14 days, but I learned my lesson. (laughs) So from that, I'm just like, this thing is absolutely incredible. The body is going to tell you what it needs. And the brilliant work that Coach Jesse and Dr. Amun have done with this program, y'all, if you just follow it, if you are just honest enough with yourself and with the process and just follow it, I promise you'll see results. It's going to vary. Everybody is different. Everybody's conditions are different. Some might see a significant um, improvement in your conditions sooner than others. But I promise if you stick it out, I mean, and there's nothing you can really do to like hurt yourself permanently. Thankfully, the body is resilient and it is forgiving. So whatever you're doing right now, it will acknowledge the shift immediately as soon as you do it. Just like the bad things you do is go acknowledge that too immediately and how you feel and how you look. But for me, my health overall, I, like I said, I feel, I do feel more radiant in my skin. I think my, 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 lifestyle can drain me and I travel a lot and I'm on planes and I've come out to California. It's dry as hell out here. We have lots of moisture in South Florida, but just being elevated and and traveling back and forth, not hydrating well, drinking too much coffee because of how that life works. All of that stuff I think had robbed me of the coloring of my skin. I was dehydrated and didn't even know. So once I did the program and saw physically what it was doing to bring life back to my skin for my body to read, to absorb the nutrients it now needs because I'm clearing the way now. I'm not feeding myself crap, preventing it from absorbing the nutrients. Now I'm all about electric food. Now I totally get, and I know y'all can't see my shirt right now, but it says, give me that vitamin D because it's a real thing. We need sun. We need food that absorbs the sun. We need living foods. So my health, my attitude, my approach, my knowledge base, my intellect, my commitment to myself, all of it has just elevated so tremendously because of Coach Jesse, Dr. Moon, and the Detox Now. And I'm here for it. And I just want to share my testimony and story with y'all because I know so many of you also, you need this. You need, you just needed a nudge. And I'm here to give you that nudge. I'm a real person that has gone through this and lived it and I'm currently living it and it works. So don't hesitate, y'all. Come get on board with the detox now. I mentioned this already, but I want to just say again, y'all, because some of this can seem so overwhelming. Some of it can really sound like, oh, my God, like my lifestyle will not even allow me to make this kind of transition. I promise you, think of it this way. It's just wherever, what's the saying? Wherever attention goes, energy flows. So if you want this to work for you, it totally can. You too can have balance. You absolutely can have balance. We just have to decide how to make room for ourselves. I feel like this program is literally the ultimate way to show up for yourself. It is the ultimate way to show love to yourself. It is now you deciding, I am prioritizing my health, how I feel, how I look, and just what I want to manifest for my being. Prioritize that. And you will find that things, the universe will conspire in your favor. You will find ways to get past all of the roadblocks that might have held you from making this transition before or committing to yourself before and sticking to it. This is something different. Like think deeper than just this program and you fasting and changing how you eat. You literally are now prioritizing yourself and what you need for your life. And it's possible. We all deserve balance. We all deserve to be loved. And we cannot expect it to be done for us or somebody to somebody else to do it. We have to do it. Deciding that, okay, well, instead of maybe I'd, have a certain grocery list that I always get and it's consistent. And I go to like, for us, it's Publix. We're we're Publix folks down in South Florida. Instead, you know, Publix does have a pop in produce section. Produce has green wise. And honestly, I found myself and I still struggle because Publix makes some of 
the best fried chicken in their deli. And every time I walk in there, my nose is lit up with that darn fried chicken. But I have developed enough um, enough resistance to it where I honestly, I go to the produce section and that's where I hover. Rarely am I going on other aisles if I need spices, but I typically get everything I need from the produce section. And you will find that your shopping cart and your list will start shifting. You'll figure out what things from Whole Foods you need, where to get stuff from your local grocery store, some things you may have to order, but everything you need to maintain this lifestyle and this diet is totally there. You just just seek it and it will present itself. Will it be a bit inconvenient? Absolutely. Will it be tough to transition when you're used to eating a certain way? You've had a tradition of like your life, your mom's life, your grandmother's life. We There's a certain way that, that we eat in our culture. Will it be tough to depart from that? Sure it will. But I feel like once you start understanding the effects of the things, like we do this to ourselves. I think that was my rudest awakening once I found out about the detox now. It was just basically that You mean to tell me all this time I've been doing this to myself? I'm the reason I have control over this? So to know that is kind of hard to unknow it. Again, it really did become me being okay with being the unicorn. I was fine with having my own kind of like, I'm going to bring my food if I need to. Sometimes, yes, that, that can be a bit extra. But I'd rather that than to starve or to feel like, well, let me go ahead and, you know, eat this soup made with beef broth. Like I don't, I I just, I don't want to do it. I don't want to contaminate what I've done by eating beef or chicken. If there's a chance that I might eat something that's going to have me feeling bad an hour later, I don't want it. So that is an example of just like, let me prioritize what I know is best for me. I might have to go out of my way to make some things happen, but y'all it's so worth it. Again, you deserve that love. You deserve that. That is that is self-love at its finest. And you deserve that. It will manifest itself in how you feel and how you look. I promise you. I highly encourage when you're ready, because this, this can't, this shouldn't be something that you feel pressured to do or that somebody's beating you over the head about it. This has to be your decision and your why has to really mean something for you. It has to be the kind of why that, Hell or high water, I don't care what it takes. I don't care how hard this is. I'm committing to this because I need this particular part of me to change or this thing in my life to change. When you're in that place, sign up for a free consult. There are group consultations. Doesn't cost you a dime. You are in a very secure, safe space to talk about what's going on with you. You're being given, and you and in those group consults, what's awesome about them is that you're getting enlightened by other women's stories and what they're dealing with. It could be things that you're like, oh yeah, God, I forgot I'm dealing with that too. I didn't even think about that, or I didn't know that this was related to that. They're awesome. Sign up for a group consult, get that first um, exposure to the community. It's an awesome community, the women and the people. And it's not just women because there are men, too, that do benefit from some of the other programs. I know right now we're talking about women's health. So just know that you're in a, a community of other women who are dealing with probably the same things you are and you can get the support you need. You can get the advice you need and you'll definitely get firsthand um, guidance on which programs are best in the detox now, which additional supplements you might want to incorporate. And it's going to change your life. I assure you for the best. So let me say this. I want to make sure that I tap into the part of the economics around plant-based and vegan eating, because I hear it all the time when I'm having conversations with folks or as a result of being on Ready to Love, I've been doing lots of lives and lots of interviews. And when I mention this part of my life, I am really thrilled to see how many of the viewers and the people that are attending or in the chat rooms that are like, I really want to try this. This is something I've been thinking about. I have fibroids too. I need to have a hysterectomy, but eating plant-based and vegan is so expensive. Sis, you're going to pay one way or another. For me, the reality of it was this, my abdominal myomectomy cost $37,000. Thankfully, I did have some insurance that covered some of it. I had to come out of pocket with some of it. But because of my ignorance, 
and just not understanding what makes fibroids do what they do, I created that circumstance for myself and had to cough up that money to pay for that surgery. If we don't decide to make different decisions in regards to how we eat and take care of ourselves, either we invest in how we eat now to have a better quality of life, perhaps a longer life, a healthier, cleaner life, or on the back end, when we start reaching a certain age, now we got a tray full of prescriptions or we've got health problems or our bodies are breaking down. And now we got therapy and we have all of these treatments to pay for and all of these things. Like y'all, that stuff is super, super, super real. I'm not saying that if you're plant-based that you won't have a single health issue in the world. We've already covered that. We said that you do need to incorporate traditional medicine and science in addition to these alternative systems to, to figure out the best combination for you. But your conditions and the issues you may have going into your later years, and this is, again, why I was able to make this transition so easily, because going into my 40s, or at the time, no, I was already mid-40. I was 45, when at 44, 45, when I decided. At that point, I'm already knowing. I'm not really technically aging backwards and conditions are probably just going to worsen. My overall health now is becoming a thing thing for me because I don't want in five to 10 years from now, I don't want to have to be limping, hobbling around. I don't want my body breaking down. I'm not ready for that. I don't want to be 50 and I can't go run two miles. I, I still want a good, clean and bill of health. I want to be active. I want to be healthy. I want to still enjoy the youth of like, you know, the life I've had all along. And I see too many plant-based 70 year olds that are out here in the gym, y'all. And they look good. They fine. I've seen some 70 year old men that I'm like, I mean, I'm not typically into older men, but my God, if they look like you, what is the secret? And I think women, Chef Babette is one of them. Like I see so many success stories of these folks that are like over 60, over 70, and they find it in me and you in our 30s and 40s. That says a lot because the secret that they all have is A, they do prioritize and love themselves and their health. They take care of themselves, but they are plant-based eaters. So Invest in it now, invest in your groceries, invest in these herbs, invest in your daily living now so that later on you're not like heavy laden with medical bills because we don't even have to get into the whole food and drug administration and how the crappy food we eat basically propels us into the pharmaceutical industry with having now to be going to the doctor every week because something wrong and falling apart on us. You're going to pay one way or another, sis. Don't stress that. We, we can make our budgets work so that maybe we spend a little bit less on stuff that we don't need and put a little bit more towards eating good because, sis, you want to look good and feel good too, right? So don't fret over the cost. All will be well. Make that investment in yourself with the detox now.